Hi, I'm Dr. Marty Ross. In this video, I talk about how to treat Babesia. I describe how long it's going to take to get over this illness, what your chances are of getting over it, and also I describe various herbal and prescription uh, antimicrobial combinations that you can use to recover from this illness as part of your Lyme disease treatment. If you have any questions about the dosing of the herbs and the prescriptions that I recommend, click on a link to the written article that I have in the description for this video. Treat Lyme is supported by purchases you make through Marty Ross MD supplements. So treating Babesia and Lyme disease can be complex at times. Um, Babesia is one of the co-infections, meaning another germ you get when a tick bites you and gives you Lyme. Sometimes it will also transmit a Babesia among some other co-infections as well too. This video I want to talk just to you about how we treat Babesia though. Uh, so Babesia is a blood parasite. It actually lives inside red blood cells and acts in a similar way to what malaria does for instance. And so we find it most useful to use anti-malaria medications. Now, I do want to let you know that in terms of research about treatment for what's the best way to treat Babesia and Lyme disease, there have been no studies done that look at what is the best agent to use when we're treating somebody for Lyme disease. They don't exist. There have been some seven to 10 day studies that look at using a medicine called Atovaquone uh, along with a drug called Zithromax. And there was another, some other studies looking at using something called Clindamycin along with uh, quinine. Those are the only studies, but they were not done in people with Lyme disease. So unfortunately, Usually, what, the best we have is what the experience of Lyme doctors tells us may be the best options, and that's what I review here, okay? So the one thing I want to let you know is with treatment, in my experience in my Seattle practice, I find that I'm able to get rid of Babesia about 95% of the time. That's pretty good, okay? In terms of how quickly a person can recover from Babesia, uh, it can take four to five months to totally get Babesia out. Um, and the reason for that, we think, is that um, Babesia lives in the red blood cells. And a red blood cell, once it's made in your bone marrow, actually lives for about three to four months. We find it best to treat for at least one life cycle of red blood cells, which is going to be you know, beyond that three to four months that those red blood cells live. So we try to treat for four to five months. We find when we do that, we have less of a chance of getting into problems with relapse or not getting the Babesia adequately treated, okay? In terms of it, during your treatment, um, in terms of how quickly you should start seeing improvements, if you're on the right combination, if you're on a combination that is working for you, usually within one to two months, you'll start seeing improvement in your Babesia symptoms, although it may still take the full four to five months for the Babesia treatment to work entirely. But if you're not seeing improvements in some of those Babesia symptoms, by one to two months into a Babesia treatment, it's time to think about changing to a different agent, okay? All right, now, I like breaking my Babesia treatments down into three different tiers, okay? Tier one um, has the best chance of working and the, the, item, the drugs and herb, actually drugs, in tier one work about 80 to 85% of the time, okay? Tier two options include some prescriptions and also some herbs, and they have a chance of working about 75 to 80% of the time. And then in tier three, the, the drug combination that is in tier three has a chance of working 75 to 85% of the time, but the reason I put it in tier three is there's just huge side effects that make the tier three option very difficult to take, okay? All right, so tier one options. Tier one options all involve using at least two drugs, okay? And the main agent that is used in a tier one treatment is to use a drug called Atovaquone. Now Atovaquone you can get in two different ways. You can get it as a liquid uh, variety, either generically as Atovaquone or as something called Mepron, or you can get Atovaquone as a combination pill. Um, that it has something in it uh, called Atovacone along with another drug called Proquinil, which is a quinine-like medicine. And the trade name for that is something called Malarone, okay? So um, you're either going to use um, the pill form of Atovacone, which has Proquinil in it, or you're going to use the liquid form of Atovacone. And then you want to combine it with some um, medicines that work inside the cells. We call those the intracellular antibiotics, okay? 
and those can be either Zithromax, Biaxin, um, Doxycycline, Minocycline, or a sulfa antibiotic called Bactrim, all right? And for specific dosing about how you would do all this, take a look at my written article. It's just easier to look at the dosing there, okay? All right, so those intracellulars that I just said can be combined either with the malarone or the mepron, all right? Okay, that's your tier ones, all right? In tier two, there's two herbs and then there's two prescription options, all right? So the herbs that I like using in tier two are um, either something called artemisinin um, or another a drug called cryptolepis. Now, both of those um, are recognized for treating malaria, all right? So for instance, the World Health Organization recognizes artemisinin as one of the first line drugs to use to treat malaria, all right? Um, and the way that you use artemisinin, it's a little tricky um, because uh, the liver has the ability to uh, um, metabolize it, clean it out quickly. So when you're using artemisinin, the way that I like to dose it is have people take a high dose for three days and then be off of it for 11 days so their liver unlearns the ability to clean that drug out, okay? Um, in terms of the other herb, it's called cryptolepis, and that comes to us out of Ghana, uh, Africa, where it was used to, to treat malaria quite successfully. Um, and I find it to be quite helpful in Lyme too. And if you're, uh, you could either do the artemisinin alone, or you could do the um, cryptolepis alone, or you can use them together, okay? And if you were to use them together, you would do a combination by taking the artemisinin three days on, 11 days off, while using the cryptolepis every day, okay? And again, take a look at the written article for the specific dosing instructions that I have for that, okay? All right, then in terms of prescription option that is in this category, the prescription is a medication called Larium, all right? Uh, that's one of them. And the other one is a drug called a Coartum, all right? Now, Larium, also known as Mefloquine, um, I have in this category, because it, again, it works 75 to 80% of the time, the problem, there's a big problem though with larium, and that is about 10, maybe 20% of the time that people take it, they can develop psychiatric side effects like depression or hallucinations, okay? So it's a little complicated. I tended to use it in my practice only as a later resort, okay? All right, all right. The other drug that I would put in a tier two category is a drug called Coartum. And Coartum is a two drug combination um, it has something in it, um, uh, uh, comb it, it, the two things that are in it, one is called uh, artemether and the other one is called uh, uh, lumefantrine. And uh, that's a combination pill. Um, the way that you do that is you take it three days in a row, um, every 14 days basically, okay? Um, it, it, it generally is well tolerated, just again, it has a lower chance of working, which is why I put it in tier two. Okay, then. If everything else is failing, that's when you look at what I call the tier three treatment. And again, the tier three treatment has a 75 to 85% chance of working, but you've got major side effect problems here, right? And that is to use a combination of something called clindamycin along with either quinine or a quinine lookalike medication called Plaquenil, all right? All right, so the problems with quinine and quinine-like medicines is they can tend to give you various forms of nerve injury, making it difficult to take the medications, all right? So you can lose your ability to hear, for instance, and you have to stop it. Now granted, once you stop it, that hearing should return, okay? And you might even get uh, like single nerves not working correctly, like the nerve that makes your finger work, for instance, it may just stop working too. The other thing is a lot of GI side effects of this combination as well too. So again, I would reserve it for people that we just, nothing else seems to be working. Okay, all right. So again, as I said at the beginning, um, you pick one of these combinations, you go with it. And if by um, uh, one month to two months in, that combination is not working, then you make a change. You change to a different combination. Um, and in general though, by around four to five months, you should be able to get uh, Babesia knocked out about 95% of the time using uh, one of these uh, combinations.